All right, it's time to get the old plow truck started up. Have the keys right here. I'm gonna get in and see if we can get it started, get it ready for the winter. All right, let's get in. All right, let's see what happens. Uh oh. Oh, great. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. What do you do when you have problems? You consult the owner's manual. All right, let's see. Troubleshooting. Vehicle will not start. Check the battery. Sounds like good advice. Good thing I have a owner's manual here, my service manual for this vehicle. Just trying to prove a little point here with this. Um, it is dead and I do need a new battery. With uh, I don't need new stakes, snake skins, I have plenty of those. But uh, let me know by the way if you see any snakes coming up out of the motor and trying to get me. Uh, just keep an eye out for me while I'm talking to you on the camera there. But uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make a little point here about atheistic science. See, what I'm doing here, my little act, is I'm trying to show the fact that you have something that is created, obviously, by intelligent design. If you're a Ford guy, you might not say that this is intelligent design, being a Chevy, but uh, or Dodge guy or whatever, or you like you know Toyotas or something. But uh, there's an intelligent design here, and there's a manual about the intelligent design. And this manual was written by the creators of this vehicle, okay? Um, but you're, if you're an atheist, you would approach this problem completely different. See, atheism uh, teaches that everything gets better, and that man continually is evolving and becoming more intelligent. So you might say, well, the manual... See, people have falsely, there are people that read the manual and they still don't know how to fix it correctly and they do bad and whatever else. So maybe the problem with the vehicle is not actually the vehicle, maybe it's the manual. See, we should probably start to redo, just ignore the manual and just start to scientifically analyze what is the real reason why this is not starting. Hmm, maybe it's not the battery. You know what, it could actually be the serpentine belt. You should really call it a serpentine belt with all the snake skins in this thing, but, uh, you know, maybe it's the serpentine belt. Hmm, maybe we shouldn't be using a belt made out of rubber. Maybe we should use a, uh, one that's made out of duct tape. Or maybe we should use one that's made out of metal. It would last longer than the rubber. Well, why don't we get a grant from the government and we'll do a, some studies here to see the possibilities of using metal belts versus rubber belts for the serpentine system. And they do all the testing, they get the grants, they go through with it, they do all the science and they say, okay, yeah, the, the belt, the metal belt definitely failed. Maybe it's the brake system. Yeah, I think maybe um, we should use something else instead of the brake fluid, we'll use something else. Let's, let's try that. And they do all the scientific testing and just amass mountains. They bring in the world's experts to, to test the brake fluid. And we need something with a different viscosity. Why don't we try a orange juice so next time we'll use some gear oil next time maybe some muddy water or something or or uh, we'll try lots of different things oh that failed well but we've learned a lot you know we've we've learned a whole lot here and um so you know we're as long as we're making progress you see then we're good that's atheistic science you have to question everything you have to come out and you say the only thing that i've learned the only thing that i can say for sure is that i can't say anything for sure the only thing i know is that i know nothing that's the mark of a good atheistic scientific uh, mind. And so, you know, you make progress through consistent failure, right? Um, okay, we tried the belt thing, we tried the brake fluid, it's, it's still not starting. Um, you know what, instead of a battery, I have an idea. Why don't we put um, a solar panel there or something? Uh, well, we can put, maybe we could put a, um, a bowl of, pea soup and we'll just say it identifies as a battery that might work um, maybe it's not actually the battery maybe it's the alternator and we could actually switch the alternator with um, the air conditioning condenser over there and well that didn't work but as long as we're making progress remember that's what it's all about that's the important part of this whole thing uh, and you know what happens is as long as you're making that progress, you see that is atheistic evolutionary science. 
So occasionally you might get actually run in with real science that's tried and tested and true, you know. Uh, disease produces symptoms and things like that, you know. Second law of thermodynamics that things get worse with time. Um, you know, and you run into real science like that and you have to say, yes, well, but in this case I think that we can get around that because of the input of energy into the thing here and, and somebody says it doesn't make sense. Okay, well then I'll come up with a bunch of Latin terms to make it seem more intellectual, so therefore then it makes more sense. Uh, and um, you get somebody coming along and there's some guy comes along and he says, hey, what are you doing? And you have all these, everything just set apart and there's this experiment and that experiment and all the scientists with their white lab coats furiously writing down their latest findings and the, and the government's there writing checks out, you know, grant money after grant money. Here you go, here's another check. This is amazing. You're doing great work uh, furthering science. And some dumb buddy comes along and he says, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the manual for that truck. Let me just uh, turn to the page that I need to and I'll tell you what's wrong. Oh, you and your book. Oh, you and your manual. Why don't you just, you know, you're standing in the way of progress. Going back to this thing of, uh, it has to be this way and it has to be that way. Your dogmatic belief system. Who are you to say that it's right or wrong to replace the battery with a bowl of pea soup? How do you know for sure? You're, you're, you're impeding scientific progress. <laughs> uh, so, um, that's my interpretation of modern atheistic, quote-unquote, science. Uh, we now have people that uh, you can be born as a biological, scientifically provable, verifiable male, but is when you get to a certain age and you go through the proper mind control conditioning, then you can say, I think I was actually born the wrong thing. I'm actually a female in a male body, and I should have the surgery to correct this issue. <laughs> and that's called science by people out there. You can actually go to a hospital and have that called science. Medical science. It's not science, right? Um, there are established ways that this motor runs. It's been ironed out and worked out. They know how to do these things, right? I know what I need. If there's no lights that come on, the key doesn't do anything when you turn it in the ignition, and it's not just, you know, well, maybe the ignition's bad. No, it's not the ignition because there's no lights on, no interior lights. I turn the headlights on, nothing comes on here either with the headlights. It's the battery, especially because this is a plow truck. It sits around a lot. All right, and the other thing I, I didn't tell you is that I actually tried to jump start it before with jumper cables on the battery. So it's not the battery, or excuse me, it's not some other thing, it's the battery. All right, but uh, I'm going to show you a verse of scripture here at the end uh, to warn you about this thing of oppositions of science falsely so called. Let's go to the scriptures. All right, we are in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 20 and 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Uh, watch out for oppositions of science falsely so called. This is the owner's manual for man. God wrote it. The King James Bible for the English speaking world. Don't let, trust anybody that tries to turn you away from that. All right, I have the right wrench, little tiny, 5 sixteenths, to get these weird little connectors on the battery off of this wacky Chevy. Let's get at it here. Got the negative off. Let me get the other one here. There's the positive. I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there. Move that out of the way. I have a the little holder bolt thing down there that holds the bottom of the battery on. So I have to get that off next. Alright, to get down in to get that bolt, I have to use this ratchet with a half inch socket and this extension on there to get down in. Let me work at that. Shouldn't take too long. I think I might have gotten it there. 
already loosened it a little bit. So, still haven't had any snakes jumping out at me, thankfully. Keeping an eye out though. <laughs> And there's my rusty old bolt holding the battery down. Battery's loose. Now it's just a matter of getting it out of there. Can I get it out without moving this stupid thing? Little metal bracket over top of it here, probably to keep the front end from falling apart on these newer vehicles. So I have to take that off now too. I'll be right back. Well, when all else fails, just use an adjustable wrench. <laughs> Not a structural, very important thing here, so. Okay. Got it loose. I'm just gonna put it right back in there. Right back in the hole again. There we go. Swing that out of the way. Put this bolt back in place so I don't lose it. Many people already think I've lost it. Not the bolt. Up there. All right, now there's the battery. Now we can get another battery. So, <laughs> hope you enjoyed our little, my little weird video here and uh, we'll see you in the next video.